Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 71 of Cincinnati Cancer Advisors Medical Minute Podcast presented by Kroger Health. And I am here today. My name is Steve Abbott. I'm executive director of Cincinnati Cancer Advisors. And I'm here today. I apologize for my voice up front. Um, but anyway, it's a little froggy, but um, we'll get through it just fine. So I'm here today with my colleagues, Dr. Abdul Jazzy, um, who is our director of innovation and research and director of international programs here at CCA, and our founder, Dr. Bill Barrett, um, who is to my right. Um, so, and I'd also like to welcome Dr. Patel, um, uh, who is at Northwestern, I believe, if I'm not correct, and editor in chief of Cancer.net, <coughs> which is. Um, the American Society of Clinical Co- uh, Clinical Oncology's um, patient resources um, uh, that so many turn to um, to try to understand a little bit more in a, pa- in a patient-friendly way, and that'll become important here in just a minute when I explain kind of what our Medical Minute podcast does. So, welcome, Dr. Patel. Thank you. Um, so, one thing I noticed today, I was I was kind of looking and. Um, I was amused and amazed by um, your patient ratings and to the point that they looked um, ridiculous and unreal and not possible, (laughs) kind of like ours. And, um, (laughs) but uh, so therefore I believe them, but, um, but I think they're, when I kind of read through the patient comments there, you have those ratings, I think for the same reason um, that we do, which is um, empathy for patient cases. Um, It's pretty clear to me based on the, on the comments that you take time, to uh, listen to people and um, give them a chance to ask their questions and understand their disease, all things that we try to do here at Cincinnati Cancer Advisors. And we started the, the Medical Minute podcast um, as an extension you know, to give our, our administrative and uh, marketing team something to do. Uh, but we, we wanted to, um, we're fortunate to have three cancer survivors here on our administrative staff. And it kind of informs the way, you know, I believe it informs the way um, on the on the administrative side of the building on how we provide patient care because we have a constant dialogue between clinicians and and uh, our administrative team and so we wanted to start this podcast to give uh, patients a chance to tune in at their convenience but bring our, our clinicians on explain things that are otherwise not explained well or are difficult to understand and explain those in a way that they can understand it and so that's really a, a extension of our mission here at CCA. And it's why we're so excited about this new program that we're undertaking um, with ASCO, um, kind of leveraging the cancer.net content. So um, if you could maybe, if you could maybe um, uh, touch on that just a little bit, but first I wanted to give Dr. Barrett, our founder, a chance to kind of explain his view of our mission and what caused him to start our foundation and our, and our Cincinnati Cancer Advisors practice. Thanks, Steve, and thank you so much for joining. And uh, the mission of Cincinnati Cancer Advisors is to do all that we can to raise the level of cancer care in our community. And it's a unique resource that provides second opinions for people with newly diagnosed cancers as the ultimate honest broker approach where we do not assume care. So it's consult only. And, and so, so often if somebody seeks a second opinion for their newly diagnosed cancer. Often it's out of town, it's inconvenient, it's expensive. The quality is quite variable. There may or may may not be communication with the treating oncologist. And very often there's almost always an attempt to recruit the patient there for care. So this is the opposite of all that. It's local, it's convenient, there's no charge for it. It's a platinum level consultation, immediate discussion with the treating oncologist. Uh, our oncologists call around the country, around the world, get expertise to share with the treating oncologist, and no attempt to, tra- to change the patient's uh, place of care. So it's a highly unique service, and we think it's elevating the care in Cincinnati by helping particular patients that we have the privilege of seeing. Secondly, helping the physicians taking care of that particular patient in that care. Thirdly, helping that physician for patients with similar diagnoses in the future they may see from just what they learned this time around. And fourthly, the whole city now knows that this independent entity may be overlooking their work. Everybody is raising their game. The, we, there's no charge for it uh, for three reasons. One is so there's no barrier to anybody, no, more, no matter what their economic background is, for getting this platinum level service. Secondly, uh, when a patient goes uh, for 
traditional medical care, there are insurance obstacles. Uh, there are things that somehow take away from the actual clinical care and clinical opinion. And thirdly, by our physicians not having to deal with the administrative distractions that are such a part of American medicine these days between peer-to-peer requests and insurance issues and billing and collection and all the things that distract from the actual clinical care, our physicians can perform at their very highest level. Their focus is exclusively understanding the patient, understanding their disease, researching their options, communicating that. So it's been a fantastic service that we're all proud to be part of. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And you know, I came here first as a patient, Dr. Patel, so I've I kind of experienced that different, which is a difference, which is what made me want to join the team, and I've been so fortunate to do so. Can you take us um, through a little bit? Um, you know, some, a lot of the people here may not even know what ASCO means. I said earlier, American Society of Clinical Oncology, and you know, I think of that as, at least I think of it in terms of, you know, the top kind of professional organization in the world, really, for oncology. But I think people that even know about that probably think of it as, oh, it's just a bunch of doctors. And so, but there's this platform underneath that we've already referred to, which is cancer.net. And I'm not sure everybody really knows um, about kind of ASCO's focus on patient resources and education. So can you explain a little bit about that to us as well? Sure. Again, thank you so much for this you know, really wonderful and gracious um, invitation to talk about something that's so important to me and obviously to all of you um, is really thinking about how we can reimagine cancer care for patients. Um, so ASCO was started in the 1960s by a small group of oncologists who really came together. And now in 2023, it's over 45,000 people who care for um, people with cancer, right? Yeah. So, we, you know, even the terminology of that has changed. It was very medical oncology focused, taking care of patients. And now we think of it so much more holistically <clears throat> with um, thinking about healthcare providers and whether that's a nurse, a patient navigator, a healthcare worker, um, you know, that's sort of grassroots, a clinical researcher, all of those people working together to improve outcomes for patients and to cure more patients with cancer. Um, and that sort of moving not only from a patient, but really to someone who lives in an ecosystem thinking about a person with cancer, right? So how do they and their relationships change? How does work change? What happens in the family unit? Um, and really thinking about how we can bring our best resources the fact is that the um, pace of cancer um, treatment advancements is just dizzying. The number of new drugs in the past year, the way we've been able to incorporate um, so much foundational science to really personalize therapy, it's a very different product you know, than it was 10 or 15 years ago where everything was sort of kind of very monolithic and it was like you know, there's one option and you do this or or maybe not now people have a lot of options and having i think shared understanding and making good options ones that are consistent with what a person wants from their cancer therapy requires the sort of shared information and really level setting and so um so ASCO is a professional organization is fantastic in terms of really highlighting the best science, promoting sharing of information, developing networks in the United States and internationally to really make um, the transition from bench to bedside faster than ever. But such an important part of ASCO is really thinking about who we serve. And one of those things is, came through with cancer.net. It used to be called Patients Living with Cancer, and it started over 20 years ago with one of um, with a, with a small group of people that wanted to create some content for patients to understand chemotherapy drugs. What it's really morphed into now is the fundamental source for patients and caregivers um, for um from ASCO that's really outward facing. And so we have a, um, a large editorial team from that includes uh, ASCO staff. And we have just a terrific group of editors and associate editors and panel members. And we've really combined this expertise uh, to make sure that we're giving the most up-to-date and best information we can to patients. So individually on cancer.net, if you go to the landing page, you'll see that we cover 
um, in depth, many different kinds of cancer, over 140 different kinds of cancer. We give information about certain drugs. We include new drug approvals. So we give very sort of clear information that includes diagrams and, um, and sort of the whole trajectory from early stage to curative intent to more advanced disease in a, in a lot of different cancers. But another huge part of cancer.net is really living with cancer. And so we have a lot of information about nutrition. We have information about what to do in a natural disaster. So what if your cancer therapy is interrupted by a flood, for example? Um, during uh, the pandemic, certainly, I think we were the most up-to-date site for COVID information for patients with cancer. Um, so there are many other domains. Uh, we talk about psychosocial functioning and we have an entire panel of psychologists and social workers who create content that we think is relevant. What's really been exciting in the past couple of years is that we've been able to translate a lot of the content to Spanish um, as well as Chinese. We have um, multiple other languages that are sort of topic specific. And what's been really cool is that we've developed a mobile app um, for now, which has sort of been launched. And with that, we're hoping to empower patients um, to collect their own information so they can report their symptoms, understand their test results. And so when you do have that time with your healthcare provider, you have shared understanding so you can make really good decisions. That's the most important thing, I think, in a successful relationship is that partnership and exchange of ideas. That's, fair. That's fantastic, actually. Um, and so, Dr. Patel, I want to introduce, uh, kind of reintroduce Dr. Jazzy and um, give him the opportunity to speak about his vision um, about how, you know, we've got the ESCO meeting upcoming in June. And I think it was the second through the sixth, at, um, at the dates, I believe. And um, we at this table all kind of know about some of the big findings that get released and, and those things get picked up by the national news desks and patients are like, Oh, I think that sounds great, but I'm not sure. Um, and so we've, the, the part of our vision I think is to really, um, kind of call the a part of the content from ASCO, the, the groundbreaking stuff and really be able to get that out, um, in a language that patients can understand. So is that Dr. Jesse, is that kind of a good summary? Do you have any other kind of thoughts yeah. about that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Battelle for the overview about ASCO and, uh, uh, the cancer.net. Actually, there are more than 5,500 abstracts submitted to ASCO this year. Okay. So you can imagine the amount of science that presented there. And uh, that generates a lot of uh, news that sometimes will be, um, you know, exciting to patients, sometimes stress stressful to some of them because they need to figure out whether this applies mm -hmm. to them or not, and so on. So, um, Basically, what we are trying to do in this uh, cancer uh, ASCO direct uh, is uh, presenting patients' perspective of what uh, comes out from the meeting. So there will be an expert who um, uh, who is aware of what was presented at ASCO, local expert, and uh, you know people like yourself and from our staff yeah. who knows the patient's perspective in a, in a re in realistic way. Uh, basically, trying to translate what. What, what was presented in ASCO to the patients, their family and loved one, and those who are interested in the information. So there'll be a combination of uh, national experts who attended ASCO, local experts, and um, uh, cancer patients, survivors, and so on to, to be in this uh, um, podcast, building on the success of what this broad, uh, podcast did over the last uh, yeah. couple of years of attracting um, uh, you know, uh, audience and so on. So yeah. that's uh, that's uh, basically timely translation of what was presented to ASCO to the patient's uh, level and uh, understanding. And hopefully that will at least put things in better perspective so they know what, what does that uh, new study means to them, whether it's relevant to them or not, and what they need to do to um, yeah. get into it if they have, um, if that's relevant to them, yeah. basically. That sounds fantastic. Hopefully there won't be too many uh, things like Plavicto where you got this great thing, but you can't get it. So um, I'm kind of dealing with that now, but uh, I thankfully I got my second treatment coming up. So, um, but, but it's a good example. I think I, I laugh and joke, but it's a good example of that. You mentioned something about being stressful. It's like, this could be great for me, but I can't get it. And so it's like, I, I think being able to translate that to people in a, in, in a way that they can understand and set their expectations accordingly will, will be good. So um, we're really excited. We'll be doing several episodes after uh, after the ASCO uh, meeting, 
and um, and it'll be a great good chance to kind of pull in uh, as Dr. Jazz said a lot of uh, expertise. Um, and but we won't let him talk like doctors. We never let him talk like doctors. <laughs> yeah, actually, we have the talk for the doctor. We are doing <laughs> ASCO direct for the physicians and yeah. the healthcare professionals on September 30th, and you know this is the third year in a row. So the ed- professional education is being done at different levels in different places. But this is going to be uniquely uniquely yeah. focusing on the patients and the public. Yep, very exciting. Well, thank Dr. Patel. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're looking forward. We're we'll, looking forward to seeing more of you. And um, and I'm really excited too. I didn't. I guess I didn't realize all the stuff that exists on that on that cancer and on that plat- platform too. So it'll be a nice opportunity for us uh, to explain that to patients as well as we go. So uh, thank you. I am like out of voice at this point, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably good news for a lot of people, including my wife, when I get home. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining us today, and we will look forward to seeing you much more in the future. Uh, take care, Dr. Patel. Thanks so much. Take care. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is going to be a really exciting series. Um, it, it just a great way to relay uh, important information to patients, get it to them in a way that they can understand, know what to expect, um, and know the right questions to ask their doctor. Um, and so that's what we're here to do on the Medical Minute Podcast. So thanks again uh, for joining us, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.